Well, this is a photo of downtown Seattle, which is really close to where I live. So let's go ahead and use this lighted up pack for an example. Here's Arc, which gives you a pretty cool lightning bolt effect. You can see those strokes kind of move around. They're jagged like a lightning bolt would be. There's a bokeh, which is a Japanese word for something. I think light spot or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this is the effect you get when you have a camera that's kind of out of focus and it's pointed at a light source. That light source usually ends up looking like little dots like this. Converging is pretty cool. It's kind of an effect that you'd get if you did a long exposure, which this is here. Long exposures are when you leave the shutter on your camera open for a long time and it collects a lot of light. So these are cars that are kind of making these streaks. So if I select a bright red and I start painting, this particular brush all kind of starts at one point that converges and then as you paint with this brush, those particles all kind of spread out. So you get this sense of perspective like something was moving here during a long exposure. Next we'll look at diffused. This works really well for creating diffused lights. And you know, maybe that's the moon behind some clouds, or maybe these are little street lamps or something in fog. Let's take a look at Electro. Electro gives you these really cool little lightning bolt zap ray things. The more you move your brush, the more these little rays spread out. Let's go to 100% so that you can see that better. These nice little zigzag electricity lines. Next we'll look at flare. Flare gives you these nice lens flare effects that we kind of saw a little bit earlier. Here's headlight, which we can use to create some kind of long exposure headlight effects. We wanted to add more streaks from these cars here. We could do that. Here's hot streak. We saw that a little bit earlier. That was that back to the future effect. You could also have cracks in the ground where there's like energy or fire coming up out of the ground. Here's laser. I like laser a lot. You can just kind of press and hold in one place, and add a bunch of really bright laser lights. Here's plasma. Plasma gives you kind of a cool jet engine plasma kind of look. You can also tap with this brush and get some bullets or something like that. Let's check out radio wave. Radio wave gives you this interesting radio wave effect, like so, and it kind of changes colors as it moves along. You can control how much the color changes up here in this property here. Next, let's check out squiggle. Squiggle gives you these really cool electricity light ray kind of things. You could use these for superhero effects or lighting effects. Let's check out tail light. Let's pick a nice tail light color. This works very similar to the long exposure headlights and the converging brush where you get these nice fast looking streaks from tail lights. For these glow brushes, you're generally gonna wanna pick a dark color because these are gonna build up to white. That's kind of what they do. They'll build up to white too fast if you pick too bright of a color. So you can see if I pick a dark red, the stroke's not really gonna come out dark red. It's just gonna build up to white slower. Let's check out Wisp. Wisp gives you kind of a ghostly, wispy, smoky kind of effect. And last but not least, let's look at wormhole. You can just tap and hold and create these really crazy wormholes in the sky. You're gonna get kind of a different shape every time. You want generally a pretty big brush. You can also paint with it if you want kind of a roughly stampy kind of effect. So there you go, that's Particle Shop for Adobe Photoshop. Definitely worth checking out if you're a designer, or photographer, or an artist who's interested in enhancing your work with some really cool particle brush effects.